This past weekend, at least 46 people were shot, and that includes the youngest victim being an eight year old girl. We know that four of those shot are now dead, but that eight year old girl is now home recovering. Now we talked to Chicago police and despite there being a police camera on that block, they say they have no suspects in custody. Eight year old Abriana Barron, she was shot during a drive by in the 1000 block of Monticello Sunday afternoon. That's in the city's Humboldt Park neighborhood. She was attending a barbecue at a relative's home when a blue Dodge Charger circled several times and then opened fire. Abriana was rushed to Lurie Children's Hospital after being hit in the leg. Her mother told WGN Abriana left the hospital Sunday night. Her daughter still had bullet fragments in her leg, both above and below her knee. Early Sunday morning, very near the Garfield Park Conservatory, six people were shot in the 3500 block of West Lake. Five of the victims, women in their 20s and 30s. Even police became targets around 3.30 Sunday morning. Officers sitting in a marked patrol car at a stop sign when someone in a Nissan fired shots in their direction. That was in the 1700 block of South Costner. No one was hurt, but officers did take a man and woman from that vehicle into custody along with a gun. Among those shot this weekend, 22 of them were hit Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Saturday night into Sunday morning, that is the, the time of day that's causing us the biggest challenges. I've had enough. I can't do it over here. I can't do it. I don't want to see myself hurt. I don't want to see my kids hurt. You know, I, I can't do it. And since it is Accountability Monday, that means the police superintendent will be meeting with the mayor to discuss the weekend gun violence. And we know that Mayor Lightfoot is making herself available to the media to discuss that meeting later on this afternoon at 4.30. I visited with the two children. Uh, the young boy, I know his brother from a time I gave him a bicycle on as a back to school effort. I know the grandmother uh, who works at the Walmart in Pullman. I've been with the, them before. Unfortunately, the circumstances this time were tragic. An eight year old boy shot in the chest and back. His 10 year old female cousin hit in the shin at a baby shower in West Inglewood Saturday night. Some people just came up and were shooting. And I started running. She's screaming. People across the street are screaming. The little baby boy literally and his mom is putting pressure on his chest from the gunshot wound that he had to his chest. Witnesses say a red Chevy Equinox drove down 64th Street near Sealy, firing into the crowd. As police arrived, they performed CPR on the eight year old boy. Paramedics continued life saving efforts on the way to the hospital. Police say the boy had a collapsed lung. Four adults were also shot. The only way we can we can solve this gun violence is turning in the shooters. That's just simple as that. The babies didn't have nothing to do with whatever was going on over there. Just a, probably a gathering over there because the weather is warm. Then we got an idiot discharging a weapon, shooting multiple people. Those at the baby shower arrived at Comer Children's Hospital last night, some covered in blood. Police believe the shooting could have been retaliation related to ongoing gang violence in the neighborhood. Mayor-elect Lori Lightfoot tweeting today about the incident, saying she's heartbroken and that no parent should fear their child's safety. We must stop the epidemic of gun violence in our city. Now two kids' lives, even though they're unbelievably resilient, will never be the same. There is no sense of remorse by these gangbangers. There's no sense of accountability by these gangbangers. And for those families, those mothers and fathers and grandparents, that is wrong, and for our children that is wrong, who were just enjoying their childhood. The adults shot range in age from 23 to 42 years old. The most seriously injured was a 29-year-old woman shot in the chest and shoulder taken to Christ Hospital. We had about 20 kids out front playing. 20 kids was out front playing. Those guys who got shot were at the corner and started running towards them when they started shooting. My baby shouldn't have never got shot. 
It went through and through it. He was shot through the chest and it came back to back. I picked my son up myself and I carried him to the um, ambulance. In the back of the ambulance, the fire department said that his lungs collapsed and they did everything they could. I mean, they were they were working with him. They wouldn't even let me ride with him. They're like, man, we have to work. The first day they were saying it was touch and go. Second day they were like, we're gonna take the tube out. Third day he's sitting up, he's resting, he's, He's progressing every day. He's not critical anymore. He's going to the main floor, so. But I told my baby, I said, when God pull you through this, I will never bring you to the city. Never. He will never have to worry about coming out here. These kids can't go out and play. I grew up in Inglewood my whole life, and I, I played outside, you know, and, and it was just, it was a cold, you know. If you're gonna shoot, you tell the mamas and the babies to get inside, you know. You don't just shoot. These kids have no structure. They just out here just shooting. They just shooting. Right after my baby got shot, I was told someone else got shot on the next block. And then yesterday, a friend of mine who passed, his son got killed. It's crazy. Unfortunately, over the past 72 hours in Chicago, we saw a despicable level of violence with 52 shot and 10 killed. Weekends like this remind us all of the challenges that we face and that they are complex and profound. That there were multiple gang related attacks concentrated primarily on the west side of the city and also spilling into the downtown area. What this shows is just the proliferation of guns that we have on the streets of Chicago. We're going to continue to do everything in our power to prevent and respond to violence. But really, we can't, we cannot, can't do this without the support of the communities or a unified criminal justice system that keeps our gun offenders out of our neighborhoods. We know who a lot of these people are. And how do we know that? Because we keep arresting them over and over and over and over and over again. And it's just a vicious cycle. So until we hold violent offenders accountable the way that they should be, we're gonna to continue to see this.